What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Stellar Highway. My name is Motor Mind, and I'll be your guide tonight. It's New Comic Book Day, and I picked up a few books. Wanted to talk about them really quick. First of all, I've got New Challengers, issue two. Uh, this is a book that I really enjoyed the first issue of, and I thought that it was super interesting and super mysterious and had a great hook, um, but I also felt like it was very ambitious, like... This is like, holy cow, how will they fit all of this stuff? How will they answer all these questions in just six issues? Well, <laughs> we don't really come closer to any answers in this book, uh, but it's much better uh, at telling, intertwining the story of its cast with the actual action in the book. And I mean, I still don't know what the heck is going on but in the best way possible. This is just like a crazy roller coaster ride that you just run with. And uh, I, I like it a lot, actually. I mean, this is really cool. Uh, so basically, at the end of the last issue, the challengers were on the edge of the ocean in this sort of drop pod, and they had to fight off like a kraken type beast. Um, in this issue, we kind of pick up at sort of a backstory uh there's the backstory of moses one of the challengers and he's like this agoraphobic uh computer genius he's like isolated himself in this tiny mobile home he's hacking and hacking everything and stealing data he's able to get into some of lex luthor's systems he's like you know i'm gonna get blackmail material i'm gonna get a piece of this a piece of that i'm gonna be rich um but he keeps finding these things he calls like the dark frequency um and he gets obsessed with like finding this dark frequency these weird bits of code and they're hidden everywhere they're hidden in like hip-hop stars prenuptials and just all kinds of weird places and he just becomes obsessed in collecting them and understanding them well one day he gets contacted out of the blue they're like you know we know who you are you know you aren't as good as you think you are you're not as careful as you think you are and they basically lure him out into public you know even though he's like agoraphobic he gets on the subway to meet these mystery people and uh then it kind of like cuts back into like our little uh crab battle and uh basically the professor um is able to like send them things through their hourglasses which are tattooed on their arms and it's like he sends them these diving suits you know they're able to like power armor up and like fight back against the sea creatures uh and uh there's this guy on the team crunch he's like the brawler he's like you know keep the guns all i need are my mitts you know kind of kind of it's a clobbering time type thing uh then suddenly we have aquaman i you know i don't know why just it's in the ocean the ocean has like been split or something so they can accomplish their mission so that gets aquaman's attention i don't know I, that's I, I think that's how they're explaining it I, I don't care it's fun it's awesome I, I don't know Aquaman really you know outside of like what anyone else might know but he's played here as sort of like a Thor type character which is a comparison that makes a lot of sense to me but I never really thought of or it's never been presented to me that way as Aquaman is sort of like a god like a demigod figure and that's kind of cool and he's like you know the sea is my charge the sea is my you know, I am the guardian of the sea, I'll see to this anomaly, and, you know, you guys better not be the cause of it, you know, or, like, you know, <laughs> good luck, um, well, then, suddenly, he sees Atlantis, he starts having, like, some PTSD or something, and he puts in a mysterious call to, like, the Justice League or something, uh, at the end of it, and, and we're just kind of left hanging there, um, who did he call? we might find out by the end of the book so the challengers are uh getting uh towards their goal here they're running out of time it's uh interspersed with little backstory bits of moses on the subway and you know how he kind of conquered his agoraphobia to get to the mystery men um and then we bounce back to our ocean adventure here and they're like they find the totem uh, this I guess it's bone with like these runic carvings and they're like you know okay we're close to getting our mission accomplished but there's like a force field around this uh totem that's like repelling them so moses is doing all kind of shenanigans with frequencies and 
you know, techno babble to like get them <laughs> closer to the to the totem and deactivate the force field. But then they're like ambushed by these mystery men. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just like you know what else can this book throw at you? You've got sea monsters, you've got Aquaman, Aquaman, you've got you know giant whales fighting krakens, and oh, uh, <laughs> what else can this book do? It's just nuts, you know. Uh, I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be more surprised unless I woke up with my head stapled to the carpet. Anyways, the uh, uh, in in the past, uh, there's uh, Moses and he's confronting the mystery men. And, uh, you know, he gets a good look at their faces and they look, you know, suspiciously like the professor did in the first issue, you know, uh, he's got his face all bandaged up and he appears to be like perpetually wounded or something. I don't know. Where is all this going? What is there's more questions than answers. But uh, the mystery men, you know, they draw Moses out, you know, they just show, you know, he's like, hey, you know, you brought me all this way, you know what I can do, you know how skilled I am, what, you're just going to kill me, you know, well, that was the point, we, you know, brought you here despite all of your fears and everything, just to show you that we really control everything, including you, blam, they kill Moses, that's how he ends up. Uh, you know, in, in, in the situation he's in now. Well, he, he decides that the bone or this bone totem is like emitting a frequency and stuff that reminds him of the, of the dark frequency. And he's like, Oh my God, you know, my other life was wasted chasing this frequency, but I get a second chance. So he's like super determined to get this totem. You know, he gets a little help from uh, crunch, uh, fighting off the toadies and, uh, Moses is able to rip one of their helmets off and he sees that they're the bandaged men you know the men that killed him so he's like doubly motivated uh you know they're definitely connected to the frequency so he does some some more shenanigans with techno babble he's able to uh uh there's fin some of this art is great uh this kubert guy when he's on he's on you know i mean sometimes it looks like there's pages where he like phones it in and stuff like that but but when he's on he's he's really on i, I like i like his art um but uh yeah so he, he pulls some you know techno babble shenanigans he's able to get the totem right before another sea monster tries to chomp him and then they return to the mountain i guess his, their headquarters is in that mountain uh they're able to return to the mountain and then suddenly the professor is shot from behind by some mystery folks. But I won't spoil it. I'll let you guys discover that. So, New Challengers, number two. This book is crazy. It's nuts. Anything can happen in this book, and I love it. It's great. Good stuff. Highly recommended. I hope they keep this up. I hope they get the, you know, the pacing and all solve all these mysteries and bring it to a satisfying conclusion. Or heck just keep this thing going. I mean, you know, I could do with a mission of the week type book or something like that. I mean, you know, I, you know, this is cool stuff. I like the idea that they're, you know, the hourglasses on their arms, they can be sent equipment through them and the weird stuff like that. It's just cool. This is really cool. This reminds me of like a cool concept TV show on like sci-fi or something that didn't get the budget it deserved, but you could see all the potential. You could see how cool it was and you loved it anyways. I, you know, it's hard to describe this book, but I love it. It's great. Just a super good time. All right. I wanted to talk about Skyward. This is a book I picked up today as well. This is issue three. And I mean, this issue just continues the goodness. Uh, this is this still uh, feels to me like it could easily be some animated studios property like, you know, a DreamWorks picture or some like Disney-esque type thing because this really hits all the beats of what I would see in like a modern animated film from like Pixar or somebody like that. And that's pretty high praise. Um, that's not to say this is like a holy, uh, you know, the characters and stuff in this and the situations they get into are not wholly unique or anything like that but it's it's handled so well it's presented so well it's done so competently that you know the princess against the evil you know uh the evil king type aspect of this is done so well and so pleasing and so you know so interesting within the trappings of this like no gravity world that i think this is just really well done and i mean i you know, I ended the second issue thinking, you know what, you know, I know where this is going. I know what kind of book this is. 
And I wasn't wrong. It didn't really surprise me or anything like that. I mean, we even have like a secret prince in this book, essentially. Uh, and I mean, I don't want to spoil all the secrets, you know. But uh, I mean, this is it just drives home my suspicion that this is sort of like a you know just a, a nice you know princess on the run type adventure with the added bonus of this like low gravity setting but again this has great art just like the previous two issues really love the way this looks you know the bad guy is you know just as despicable as you thought you know he wants to prevent um her father from solving the gravity problem because monetizing the gravity problem made him the man he is you know so he's he wants the location of you know her dad she starts to realize something's up he's not very slick you know he had to be kind of written stupid for this you know i think uh just for plot purposes but he's super pushy and like getting you know willa to tell you know tell him where her father is and she's like you know oh something's obviously up here you know i'm I'll just, I'll catch you later, you know, we'll, we'll talk again, and, uh, you know, she, he, you know, he, he just lays into her, it's just gives her, he, lo he uses the gravity shoes, um, against her, you know, by locking her down, he has kind of an override, you know, I created these things, blah, 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 he locks her to the floor and just starts punching her out, <laughs> it's crazy, uh, you know, I, I would, you know, if this wasn't a tough Disney princess <laughs> uh, that grew up in the uh, the the Chicago low gravity slums, I, I would be I'd really have a problem with this little girl <laughs> taking like five punches from like a grown man. But uh, you know, let's just run with it. So she takes a little beating. Uh, you know, once he kind of does the classic oopsie, uh, you know, and gets a little too close for a headbutt. Uh, so she gets the better of him for a second, which causes the security guy to step in. Then, in addition to getting waylaid by a grown adult, she gets tased, which frees her from the gravity shoes, the magnetic shoes. You know, she's able to escape. Um, she gets out of the building and hooks up with her friend, who is basically a housekeeper to the wealthy people. Uh, she was introduced an issue or two ago, and I, I didn't really talk much about her, but uh, I'm going to skip a page or two because we don't want to reveal the identity of the secret prince. So I'll leave that for you guys to discover. You'll you'll be able to put it together without <laughs> without me. But uh, so she's being shuttled out of this out of this building, you know, with uh, in the laundry basket. She, you know, there's a <laughs> there's a little funny bit. Uh, there's a. Uh, you know, oh no, I've I've got underwear on my head because I've been in the laundry, he he he, and uh, you know, distract the scary security guard by giving him a smooch, uh, you know that old chestnut. But I mean, again, I'm not knocking it, but you know this we've seen this sort of thing before. I mean, never in this low gravity or zero gravity premise, but uh, it's it's good. I mean, this is good. I mean, I, you know, I, I could see this being adapted as like an actual animated motion picture and I would love it. Uh, you know, I hope it keeps this momentum. I keep, I keep, I hope it keeps hitting these beats, the comedic beats, the story beats. I mean, this is good stuff. I mean, I can't believe I'm praising this book so much. This is like a book for teenage girls almost. And I'm just like loving it, but Hey, you know, it's a good book. A good book is a good book. You know, I mean, it may not be the target age, but I can certainly appreciate it. But uh, in the end, Will is able to make it home, and it looks like she's too late. Somebody's ransacked her father's apartment, and he's deathly afraid of going outside. So we can only assume the worst for her father, but I'm sure that he will be just fine. I picked up Avengers issue 3 today as well. Uh, this was a fun ride as well. There's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on in this book. You know, it's kind of like not too much happened in the last book and it's like they kick it up a notch or two in this book with exposition, you know, Loki is explaining who the dark host is and why why they're on earth and sort of planting all the seeds for the story to come. There's some uh there's some 
jokes <laughs> with Ghost Rider and She-Hulk. Uh, there's a great scene where uh, she sort of plows a hole into the earth and Ghost Rider charges in with her and they go down there presumably to help uh, Doctor Strange and Black Panther. Meanwhile, everybody's kind of in the, you know, in the grasp of Loki, who takes the warp grenades from Carol. As if you remember in the last issue, she was going to use the warp grenades to teleport the Celestials into the sun, hopefully killing them in kind of like one shot. Well, Loki takes the warp grenades away, but, um, and this is some really cool Captain America stuff in this. Uh, I don't know this author. I don't know Jason Aaron, I believe is his name. Uh, I don't know this guy, but I think he writes Cap really well. I mean, he's just straight up awesome. He's just, he never gives up. He always, he's always fighting. And, uh, you know, he tries to convince Loki to do the right thing. And uh, he's just like, you know, self-sacrifice is in full effect here. You know, he, he throws the shield at the warp grenades in an attempt to, you know, he, he gets this line. He gets this great, he gets this great line here. Something like, I'll see you in the stars, Avengers. Oh, man, it's good. I like it. I like the Cap stuff in this issue. Um, the other issues, you know, he was fine at, at writing Cap, but he really gets to shine in this book. And I think, I mean, this dude, like, if he was writing Captain America, or I don't know if he's written Cap before, but if he was, I would check that out in a heartbeat because I really like what he does with Cap in this book. So, uh, you know, it cuts away to the center of the earth where Strange and uh, Black Panther are fighting the insects. They're saying they're pr becoming progressively stronger. They're feeding off of something. And that's about when uh, Ghost Rider and She-Hulk arrive. They help them fight off the bugs and take them back to the surface. And I'll skip a couple of pages here. Uh, there's a little... Uh, there's after Steve and the Celestials and Loki are teleported to the sun, uh, after that cliffhanger, the Avengers are kind of regrouping here. There's a quick, this is felt like an obligatory thing, you know, Iron Man and, you know, Carol had to clash because of their whole civil war history and Thor gets some jokes here, gets some, some memes. And I believe this is a, this is kind of like that Hercules, that famous Hercules gift, or gif, you know, where, you know, <laughs> Kevin Sorbo shouts, disappointed. They kind of give that to Thor here. And uh, if you didn't know about that meme or that gif, you would probably be pretty lost. I just happened to see that meme recently, so it was still fresh in my mind. But, you know, Hulk tops and tells them to stop their civil warring and stuff like that. And uh, so, I mean, there's, there's some jokes here. I mean... They, they feel a little forced, <laughs> uh, you know, there's the, the humor didn't really land, uh, for me in this book, but it's still fun. I mean, there's a lot of exposition. There's a lot of like making plans. What are we going to do now? Avengers S stuff like that. But I mean, the art is so good. It moves along at a snappy pace, even though there's a lot to read a lot of dialogue. I mean, you know, you can just see just, all the dialogue, all the exchange here between Cap and Loki, and I mean, it's not bad, there's just a lot of it, um, but again, you know, I think I could read this guy writing Cap all day, I think he's great at it, uh, but, uh, so basically the Avengers kind of come up with a plan, uh, the only thing that's kind of obtuse here that I, I kind of don't understand is they sort of exclude Ghost Rider from their plans, but it, it's sort of hinted in a strange way that, that Ghost Rider has picked up a piece of the Celestial tech and he's maybe like going to try to find the Celestials. I, it's a little unclear to me what they're doing with Ghost Rider, um, but Doctor Strange and Black Panther remark that when they were in the center of the Earth, they saw some symbols that alluded to the Ghost Rider, and they're like, you know, he'll be back, he'll be around when we need him, you know, he's part of this. Um, but they decide not to tell him. I, I thought that was kind of weird, kind of confusing, and kind of unnecessary. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Thor and uh, She-Hulk go to Asgard to ask Odin some questions because he was involved in the original BC Avengers. So, on the whole, I mean, this thing's a recommend as well, even though, you know, I might have just a few quibbles with it. I mean, looks good, huge, big event, exciting, well-drawn, great Captain America stuff, just 
awesome Captain America stuff. I wish this dude was writing Captain America. Like I said, that I'd be I'd be buying that every month and reviewing it. So Avengers 3, very strong, recommended. Uh, you're going to enjoy this. That does it for my books this week. I really enjoyed New Challengers this week. It's going to be my pick of the week, I guess. I really just, the just insane, <laughs> the insanity of this book, just anything can happen. Uh, all those mystery threads they're throwing out, um, all the backstory stuff was very compelling. I just liked this thing. It was just a great time. I kind of don't want this to end with issue six. I kind of want to see this keep going. A mission a week book sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, in, in one way, I don't want the mysteries to end. Uh, second up would be Avengers. Definitely the high production values, the great art. You know, even though the humor fell flat and some of the plot stuff was a little shaky, uh, the super great Captain America stuff really elevated the book for me. If the Challengers wasn't such an insane ride, uh, Avengers definitely would have taken the cake this week. And finally, Skyward, just same great art, same fantastic art, uh, and just like a very competently told, uh, you know, princess story in a cool, no gravity environment, uh, kind of in those trappings just to, to make it unique, to make it stand out. I really, you know, good week. This was a good week. I really enjoyed these three books and I hope you enjoyed my review of these books. Let me know which one you like the best in the comments below. Let me know if you're checking these out. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear your take on these books. Thank you for riding on the stellar highway and I will see you next time.